The score, 68 all. Bob Leonard of Indiana University hits one of two free throws with 27 seconds left in the 1953 NCAA championship game with University of Kansas. As the final seconds tick off, a desperation shot by Kansas goes awry, and the Hurry and Hoosiers of Indiana University have won their second national championship under the coaching of Branch McCracken. Max is definitely a leader. Uh, he led every player that ever played for him. He led. Uh, I think everyone had ever come in contact with him to maybe, maybe greater heights than they ever hoped that they would achieve. McCracken had a way of uniting the team, uh, exploding when he had to, knocking our ears back when we had to, which we certainly needed back then, uh, and just to be a father off the court to us. He was the most aggressive, competitive man I've ever known in my life, and he liked to go at it and go at it fast. Well, if I've ever known anyone that had the very top degrees of character and integrity in every sense of the word, it would be Branch McCracken. Uh, I don't suppose anyone ever loved the game of basketball more than Branch. And uh, he just didn't think you could play unless uh, you, you loved the game in the same way. And I think he made you grow up. Uh, real fast, uh, just by the way he handled the, the player. And uh, Branch had a way by him. Branch was a winner, and he instilled winning uh, into the ball players. There's just no doubt about it. I mean, there wasn't a night that you went on the floor that you weren't ready to tear someone apart. You went out there to win a ball game, and this was Branch. two years of his life, he was a college basketball coach. As a coach, Branch McCracken was many things. A teacher, an inspiration, a judge of other men's mistakes, a friend in victory, a lonely man in defeat. First and foremost, he'd been a player. In 1926, Branch McCracken came to Indiana University as a football player, not as a basketball player. He was, after all, a big, strong farm boy from Monrovia, Indiana, with just the kind of toughness required to play the rock'em sock'em style of football of the 1920s. Branch McCracken also yearned to play basketball, and in his freshman year, he tried out for the team. He not only made it, but in three varsity years, he won all Big Ten and All-American honors, and set a new conference scoring record in his senior year, 1930. His basketball coach during those years at IU was Everett Dean, who still remembers Branch McCracken. Well, I would keep you here <coughs> through lunch to tell you what kind of a basketball uh, player uh, Mac was. Uh, he loved the game, and he lived it. He did that both in his playing and in his college, uh, in his college coaching. Mac, uh, and Mac was, uh, he had great spirit, and he was an easy man to coach because he had this fine mental attitude. Uh, Mac uh, was uh, a player, a big man with lots of speed. And, uh, and he could have played the game today uh, with anyone because he looked very good uh, to see a big man in the middle of a fast break going down the floor and uh, holding his own with any of them. Mack was the first uh, player in college basketball uh, to play the pivot game, the pivot position as it's played today and has been since that time. Now, 
Mac, as I said, loved the game so much that uh, all I had to do was just to give him the correct fundamentals to give him a, a good base to work from. And he took it from there with all of that competitive spirit. Mac was a, was a great competitor. In 1938, Branch McCracken became the head basketball coach at Indiana University. Ernie Andres, who later was to become an assistant basketball coach with Branch, was a senior on that team, and he recalls his first impressions of his new coach. Branch came here my senior year. In fact, I was Mac's first captain. And, uh, of course, he had just come from Ball State, where he had been uh, very successful. And uh, it was pretty obvious to those of us who played for him that year that uh, he intended to win here at Indiana. I mean, he just had that uh, winning attitude about him. Uh, he was a uh, uh, fierce competitor. I mean, he, he, uh, he didn't believe in uh, doing anything halfway. When he went after it, he went after it all the way. And I, I don't believe I've ever, in all my uh, experience, run into a person who, who was more of a competitor than Branch McCracken. Everybody that played for Branch respected him. Uh, they respected him because uh, he, uh, he was the type of a fellow that would, uh, he would work you uh, as hard as anybody. And uh, yet at the same time, uh, he would do anything for you uh, to try to help you. And that uh, doesn't just mean on the basketball floor, that means uh, outside too, in school or in life in general. In 1940, McCracken's second year at IU, his team did not win the Big Ten Championship. Purdue did. Purdue, however, declined to go to the national championships, and Indiana University was selected as the Big Ten representative. McCracken's hurry and Hoosiers not only went, they won it. A substitute on that 1940 NCAA championship team, Bob Menke, now a trustee at Indiana University, remembers how Branch fired up the team. Well, I, his, his enthusiasm, uh... Uh, Branch Branch was, was wasn't the kind of coach to uh, to, to sit to sit uh, up in the stands during practice uh, or to be to sit uh, uh, very lethargically on the bench. He, he was always fired up. much as his team's fast-paced style of play, the always moving, ever active, always enthusiastic figure of Branch McCracken on the sidelines became a trademark of Indiana University basketball. Throughout his 24 years at IU, Branch McCracken was capable of drawing to him some of the best basketball players in the history of college basketball. Players like Walt Bellamy, Dick and Tom Bernarsdale, Archie Dees, Bob Leonard, Bill Garrett, Lou Watson, Jimmy Rail, Don Schlunt, and many, many others. How, though, over the 24-year period he coached, was McCracken able to instill such aggressiveness in his players? We asked Don Schlunt, All-American Center, 1953 to 1955. Archie Dees, All-American Center, 1957 and 58. Bob Leonard, All-American Guard in 1953 and 54, presently the coach of the Indiana Pacers. And Bill Garrett, first black basketball player in the Big Ten Conference and a 1951 All-American Center. Well, I think uh, he had uh, something about him that uh, made it very easy on all the ball players as far as getting themselves ready. I think this was one of the greatest attributes uh, he had as far as uh, the job that has to be done uh, by a coach in getting his ball players up mentally and ready uh, to give it everything they got. And it seemed uh, to be that there was something that was in the air, there was something that was there without even uh, uh, thinking about it. 
you take five individuals as smart aleck as probably we were back then, it had to have a certain type of coach. I don't think there's too many coaches in the country could have handled five young underclassmen as well as McCracken did. McCracken had a way of uniting a team, uh, exploding when he had to, knocking our ears back when we had to, which we certainly needed back then, uh, and just to be a father off the court to us and offer us advice that uh, we probably could not receive elsewhere. Well, I could, uh, uh, I could pretty well uh, fire myself up as far as that was concerned. Uh, uh, I always went out to play a ball game, but uh, with Branch, you had uh, you had such great admiration for him, and uh, we all felt so close to him that you didn't want to feel in your own mind that you could let him down uh, once you walked out on the floor. And uh, I think this is the thing. Uh, leadership, I'd say, probably is the biggest thing. Uh, Mac was definitely a leader. Uh, he led every player that ever played for him. He led, uh, I think, everyone that ever come in contact with him to maybe, maybe greater heights than they ever hoped that they would achieve. And uh, I know just people uh, that would call him from all over the state to talk about a high school basketball player they saw. Um, I mean, he was just a born leader. There's not any doubt about it. And, and people should remember that, I think. I always will, that he, if I ever really want someone to lead me to do anything or to achieve something, it would be him. And uh, that's the way that he always struck me as being a born leader. And I think he was. Well, I think he had a, a solid way, uh, without saying too much, and still being able to communicate with his ball players and individuals he dealt with. I think it must have been his, his mannerisms uh, seemed to demand respect. And the thing that amazed me about him, of course, was, was the way that, that he could get ball players up for a game so easily without seemingly uh, much effort. And I think it, the overall thing was the respect that, that he carried with him, uh, the respect that the ball players had for him. Uh, I've never run into anybody in coaching that uh, seemed to get this kind of respect from ball players. Uh, McCracken, would, I think, was a master at psyching each boy out. And rather than trying to uh, uh, psych the team as such, he'd psych each individual out. And probably the way he raised me most, he used to tell me a little certain things about the why well, he thought he'd heard that my opponent was going to do against me, say. And this has got me thinking, well, if, if this guy thinks he's going to do this, well, then I'll retaliate with something better, say. So actually, just his old way of psyching the ball player out, he did it on the side, and it was the form of question which made you think. And uh, actually, the more he did this, the, I think he got 100% out of the boys this way. He'd walk up to me on the floor and he'd say, no, man, this guy is tough. And I he's strong, and of course I wasn't really the strongest man that ever lived. At that point, I was very thin, you know. So he used this on me, you know. And he'd say, "The guy is strong, and he is tough. He'll throw you in the basket. You gotta, I want you to watch him, right? you know, because I don't want you to get hurt or anything." He started by Wednesday with that psychological stuff, and by Saturday, I can't wait till this guy comes out there. I got to get a good look at him, you know. And uh, I mean, I was really ready, you know, for him. In other words, the guy that I was going to be matched up against, and he did this uh, so well. I mean, it got, you know, like my sophomore and junior, and he, he was still able to have this effect on me when I was a senior, which is kind of amazing, you know, because usually when you play your sophomore and junior year, by the time you're a senior, you're tired of listening to the same stuff, you know. But um, he had the ability to just continue this and make me believe it, you know, even though I'd probably played against a guy once or twice already, you know. And uh, it's those little things, I think, that win games, I think, uh, as opposed to any overall big uh, condition that you do. In talking with the many friends who knew Branch McCracken, you hear many humorous stories about his career. Stories that, in their humor, point up the intenseness of this great coach. Two of his closest friends, Bill Unsworth of Greencastle, Indiana, and Jim Strickland, a college teammate of McCracken, along with Archie Dees, 
tell us about a few memories. Uh, usually, uh, his biggest concern was with his boys. He, he worried more about his own uh, uh, kids on his team than any man I've ever known in that, in that business. He was really conscious, and he followed them after they got out of school. It was a big help to them. Uh, that really it was the uh, biggest worry I think he ever had. Now, uh, he would always worry about a game beforehand. Uh, he never had a game that he thought he could just sure win. And he was the most uh, inconsolable loser I've ever known. You couldn't make him happy over losing one. Uh, whether it was by one point or 20, it didn't make any difference to him. Well, anyone that you'll talk to that knew Mac, whether he played for him or was closely acquainted with him as a friend, will always give you some instance of what a great competitor he, he was. I'll never forget the time that uh, uh, he'd been beaten by Minnesota uh, by one point at Minnesota. And you can, if you knew Ozzie Cowles and uh, Branch McCracken, you'd know what a tremendous uh, competitive battle they always had when their teams met. But on the plane coming back from Minnesota after that one, peak, uh, one point lost, Max says, my goodness, he says, if you could just get beat by 30 or 32 points, you could go to sleep at night with no strain, realizing that you had a club that wasn't going anywhere. Be all the difference in the world, sleeping or not sleeping. Well, the following year, uh, Indiana was invited to be over at the University of Cincinnati to dedicate uh, their new basketball arena. And uh, the day of the game, or at noon of the day of the game, I, uh, there was quite an imposing lunch that was given by the University of Cincinnati in honor of uh, Branch McCracken, who had appeared on a championship Monrovia team 30-some-odd years before and players that had played with Kentucky and, and uh, Ohio teams and Indiana teams, which were eligible to play in those days in the tri-state tourney, were there and they had many complimentary remarks to make about Mike. And he may have been full of pride, but I doubt it. Anyway, at the game, the dedication game, uh, as fate would have it, Minnesota, be, I mean, um, uh, the University of Cincinnati beat him by 32 or 33 points, I forget just which. But when Mike got on that team bus after that game, he says, my, my, if you could just get beat by one point, you'd know that you had something. You could be full of pride, you'd hate the one point loss, but you knew you had a, a good team. I, how can anyone sleep getting beat by 32 points? <laughs> so there was one example, at least, of uh, whether you got beat by one point or 32 points, it was agonizing. Defeat was agonizing. They were playing an afternoon game on TV, and uh, Branch had, had a habit of jumping up off the bench, you know, anyway, and he got up three or four times, and Jim Enright, the rather uh, pudgy official from Chicago, uh, was calling the game. He was an actor himself. And uh, Branch rushed out on the floor, and Enright came over and said, uh, uh, now, Branch, uh, your fly is open, and we're on national TV. And uh, Branch said, by the time I got over the shock of that, I forgot what I was going to say to him. So he went back and sat down. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't know of anybody who ever left his friends with as many pleasant and interesting memories as Mag did. And this thing that happened at Illinois was uh, interesting in that uh, his use of psychology and working up his ball players, which uh, of course he was a past master at. It happened something like this. Some of us went over to watch the ball game and uh, while the freshman preliminary was on, uh, uh, most of us went upstairs to watch it, and then we came back down to the locker room, and uh, 
Uh, then the boys came in and started getting dressed. We left, and the thing we had not noticed was that one of our party was over sound asleep behind the locker row in a corner, completely out of the way. But we're standing outside uh, talking, and we hear Mac inside beginning to start his pregame oratory, and finally he's pounding on the table, and suddenly the doors burst open, and here comes the team all charged up with fire in their eyes, and right behind him came our buddy that we'd forgotten, and he was charged up. He didn't know why, but he'd been sitting in the corner, he said later, and he heard all this going on, and he began to get enthused, and I think if Mac had handed him a suit at that point, he'd have tried it. as as a friendly man and a good teacher 
the boys that the boys that played for Branch knew they had to they had to uh, uh, get their academic work done because Branch was pushing them all the time. Uh, so far as as the, uh, the state and and uh, the country are concerned, people I think will remember Branch uh, as as a winner. I mean, uh, Branch uh, Branch was Mr. Basketball the time I was in school. He was he was number one in the country. And of course, as the years went by, other other coaches with new strategies uh, uh, perhaps uh, intruded on the scene. But uh, but when Fran when Branch's fast break was working, no one no one beat him. I don't believe that I'll ever know a man that in his circle of acquaintances and friends, uh, I'll never know anyone that. Uh, I could possibly leave uh, the warmest, any warmer feelings of friendship than everyone thinks, uh, well, I don't know, this is an awfully hard thing to talk about. Uh, I believe everyone that ever knew Mac thought that they probably knew him very well. He had a really a marvelous impact on people. And I think probably most people thought that they as an individual were just about as close to him as anyone could be. Well now, when you know a man where there are just dozens and dozens of people that have that feeling that they are uh, one of the very closest friends of McCracken, you've known a man, and a great man. March 6, 1965, Branch McCracken coached his last game before over 9,000 adoring fans who, after the game, presented him with a plaque which read, Thank you, Branch. Thank you, Branch, for giving Indiana two NCAA championships. Thank you, Branch, for piloting the Hoosiers through the golden years of 1952 to 1958 when the red and white won four Big Ten titles in six years. Thank you, Branch, for making the name Hurry and Hoosiers synonymous with the fast break brand of exciting basketball. Thank you, Branch, for the best 24 years of your life. halftime of this evening's basketball game. We're going to pause for a few moments and talk about the season in general with the coach of the Indiana University basketball team, Branch McCracken. Branch, uh, has the season up to this point gone uh, pretty much as you expected it? Yes, I think so, George. Uh, it has developed uh, Illinois and Iowa, the two outstanding teams. They both have veteran, uh, uh, have had vet veteran ball players. Their experience has shown their two outstanding basketball teams. Of course, some of the other teams have come along in good shape. Uh, I think it's gone pretty much the way we expected it to go. Mm -hmm. uh, have any of the teams we've played so far this year all been something of a surprise to you, one way or the other? Well, Ohio State uh, has an outstanding uh, uh, basketball team, I think. Uh, this boy, Freeman, is very good. He's one of the finest shooters that I have ever seen. I've seen him uh, once or twice, and uh, it's, it's almost phenomenal the way he hangs up there and shoots before he comes down. He's terrific, and the boy has, uh, has developed that by hard work. He's practiced, practiced, practiced the year round. What would you say some of our uh, most significant uh, 
improvements or developments in our squad have been so far this year. Well, George, we've, uh, of course, we've had a young uh, a team. We've had a group of sophomores. Uh, they've come along. They've come along on defense. They've come along fast on their offensive play. Uh, there are just not any substitutes for experience. They're, this league is uh, uh, one of the toughest leagues in the country, and that experience means a lot. Yeah, it doesn't seem to matter how outstanding a high school ball player he's been. It's, it's almost a different game in the Big Ten, really. Well, it, uh, uh, basketball from high school to college, it's a big adjustment. It's the same as, as uh, scholastic standing, their schoolwork. It's a terrific adjustment for uh, a boy to come from high school and step right in college basketball. It's, uh, it's a different game. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the most significant uh, thing uh, that we could talk about right here, I suppose, would be to look forward to next year. Uh, how are we going to shape up? Well, of course, you, you hate to make any predictions, long-range uh, predictions, but I expect these boys to be a lot better next year. I know that uh, they've learned a lot from uh, this year's play. Uh, we have uh, some sophomores, uh, will be sophomores next year, uh, freshmen this year coming up that we expect to help us. And uh, I, uh, I always look forward to the next season. Mm -hmm. uh, whom do we lose uh, this year? Besides Wally Choice, I suppose, is the outstanding loss, being a regular. Yes, we have uh, uh, five seniors on the team, and uh, they're all a, a fine, uh, fine group of boys. They've uh, worked hard to uh, make this a successful season, and uh, we're going to miss them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm, uh, this is a question I'll ask, but I don't guess I'll get an answer. How do you suppose we're going to shape up next year in the conference? Well, that's, uh, that's hard to say. We could come along and be a very strong team uh, next year. We could, uh, we could be up uh, around the top or uh, something might happen. There's a lot of things that affects uh, uh, the basketball team, uh, a lot of psychological angles uh, that could throw us a little haywire. You never know what's going to come up. But of course, I expect uh, to be a lot better next year than we were this year. Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, Iowa and uh, Illinois are predominantly upperclassmen teams this year, uh, losing their starters by graduation. Is that going to knock them out of contention, you suppose? Well, they, they lose some good boys. Iowa, they, uh, they have a senior group. Uh, Illinois has a senior group. I uh, hardly expect them to be as strong next year as they, are, they have been this year. I, I'd hate to think. <laughs> that they're both going to be as strong next year as they have been this present season. Just a little monotonous, doesn't That's it? That's right. On the other hand, I expect people at Iowa and Illinois get a little sick of uh, seeing us come around year after year after year, too. They kind of like to think something happened here. Well, we've, uh, we've uh, won a lot of basketball games in the past uh, 18 years. And what I tell my boys, I say, uh, when you put that Indiana uniform on, it's just like waving a red flag. The coach doesn't have to give his uh, team much of a pep talk. That's Just right. say we're playing Indiana tonight, and those boys come up for it. If I had a dollar for every team that saved their best game for us, I could, uh, I could buy Mr. Allen that new field house he wants. Well, I expect you could help on it. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Branch, for dropping uh, by this evening. Uh, I think certainly we can uh, close this interview on a very optimistic note. Uh, predominantly an underclass basketball team this year that gave a very fine account of themselves, and you know they're going to improve next year. So thanks again, Brad. Thank you, Jim.